Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cooling with Key. I do apologize. Today's episode is only going to be audio. Um, I think Satan heard me talking about him on the first episode and he was pretty mad. So he deleted the video to my second episode. What a puss. I honestly think he's mad that little Nas X is not returning his phone calls or, or texting him back and uh, giving him the cold shoulder. So today will just be audio. It's still a lot of fun. Please enjoy. Pull up, bear me. Yes, I'm finally giving it. Giving it. Pull up, bear me. Let me free my spirit. With these new powers, I can reach your mind. With these new powers, I can change your life. Let's get, shit. Let's get this shit started, man. Let's get into it. Woo! Fun <laughs> shit, though. Fun shit. <laughs> Fucking bomb ass aliens. Look, y'all. <laughs> okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cooling with Key. I'm excited to have y'all back here, man. I'm with my good friend Tay. He's going to be the producer, the producer of uh, the second episode. This is the second episode. Second episode. Uh, last week we had Division. And uh, I, I actually want to piggyback on a topic. That the vision had brought up in the last episode, he was talking about how um, he hates it when he's talking to uh, a girl, and uh, well, actually, he used the word uh, "bitches." That was if, I, if I'm we went there, huh? If I'm if I'm quoting correctly, I want to be correct here. Yeah, he said he hates it when bitches tell him that you know they are a CNA, and you know when they get off work, all they do is smoke weed, and I wanted to go and. To further detail of what he meant and what we was talking about. And it was, it's not that, okay, you're a CNA and you go home, you smoke weed. If a female is happy or whoever is happy, it's, it ain't even got to be a CNA. If you're happy with your job and you are content, you are comfortable there and you don't want to do anything else and you go home and you smoke your weed you do your crack whatever you do i don't know i don't know what drugs you guys <laughs> that's are doing a <laughs> that's a big that's a big step but i don't know what you guys are doing but that's fine because you're happy you're winning that's yeah. success happiness is success we were talking about the people that complain about their jobs yeah if you're yep. complaining about being a cna and then you get off work and you do nothing you smoke weed all day you lay around the house that is the females that division had a problem yeah. with. And uh, I just wanted to go into detail about that to kind of explain it, try to clear it up a little bit for you guys. Yeah, if you're so, miserable but you're not doing anything to yeah, to, change that. To change it. That's, and all you're doing is stuff like smoke weed and yeah, stuff. Because, not I mean, that smoking weed is bad, but if you're not doing anything productive to be able to move on from whatever exactly. miserable place. Yeah, Facts. yeah. Because yep. I, I talk to a lot of people, people I work with, people I have worked with before, and it's usually your coworkers. They you because you can hear them complain. They complain oh, yeah. to you. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I gotta go do that. I hate that man. I, man, I can't wait to get off. Man, I can't wait. Well, we gotta work this weekend. We got. To, oh man, I hate. You yeah. hear a bunch yep. of complaining. Yep. But then when they get off work, they don't do anything to enhance it or to change anything. And those are, those are the same type of people that will be like. No, don't take that job opportunity. Oh, like, yeah. You don't want to take that Facts. risk. Yeah, they, like, they will. They're not risk takers. Right. And then when they see you trying to do something, that and that that's what create a hater. The people that are afraid to take risks. Facts. You know what I mean? Yep. The people that are afraid to step outside the box and try something and do something. Those right. are the majority right. of those people will tell you, ah, that's kind of stupid, man. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Yeah, not smart. Yeah, you mm. won't do shit. All you want to do is complain about your job right now. Right. So if you're complaining about your job, do something about it. Do it. But if you love your job and you want to go home and, you know, put a little meth in your cereal, that's <laughs> fine. You're happy. You could do whatever. Little meth and fruit loops. Forget about it. <laughs> so, so yeah, I got to turn. It did. I got Tay here though, man. That was division last week for the first episode. This is the second episode. I got my other producer Tay here. Really good friend of mine. Um, we've been working out a lot together, pushing each other, motivating each other to, to yes, stay sir. on it. Health is wealth. And we've, we've been changing our freaking lives. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate you, bro. Because I got I had got fat. <laughs> and not just once, man. I got fat twice. 
I became I became a fatty two times in my life. Bro. That's like, how you know you were skinny, Key. Because yeah. you remember both times you got fat. I, I remember both times I got fat. That's how I know I'm, I shouldn't be fat. Uh, the first time I got fat, I was I was just going through a whole lot of shit. I'm not gonna lie, I was going through a whole lot of shit, and it, and I was I was one of those people that we were just talking about complaining about this, but it wasn't just my job I was complaining about. I was unhappy with my life, right? But I wasn't doing anything to change it. Yeah. The only thing I was doing was uh, you know sitting in my lazy boy, stuffing my throat with baconators from Wendy's. <laughs> Frosty, give me that. Forget about it. Gone. Drinking four locos at fucking three o'clock. Yeah, wow. I, I, I got, I got fat quick. We, we survived a lot. Four locos and juice. <laughs> juice. <laughs> so that was the first time. And I, I, it was two things that indicated, hey, key, you're fat. And the first, <laughs> and the first thing was, um, I took a picture with my brothers. And my father on Thanksgiving, this was like a few years back, and my brother had zoomed in on that picture and took a screenshot of my hand, <laughs> of my hand. And of all body parts. Of all body parts, right? So you probably think like, what? And he sent it to me, and he didn't say nothing. He didn't even say nothing. He just screenshotted a zoomed in picture of my hand and sent it to me, and was just like, I'll leave it up to Key to judge his own hand. And <laughs> And my my knuckles were gone, bro. <laughs> my knuckles have they disappeared because the baconators were just <laughs> consuming my knuckles. <laughs> my knuckles were missing. And I text him back and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Where's my knuckles? What did you do? Did you Photoshop my shit? And so I'm like, yo, the moment where I'm like, bro, if I fight somebody right now, it'd be the most satisfying. Like it, it would feel like pillows to the person that I'm punching on. Yeah, your own personal boxing gloves. Yeah, I had they would it looked like I got stung by bees. My hands were swollen. <laughs> like I punched a wall. <laughs> you fat hand punk. So I'm like I got to do something about these hands, bro. I yeah. need my knuckles back. <laughs> I miss my knuckles. I miss my knuckles so damn much. Every time I would do this, you know, you could see them. This was just a dome. Of, and when you hold your hands out hands. straight, you just see creases. It's just creep. Yeah, it's just creases of where the knuckle should be. <laughs> so, in the second time, or the the actual second indication uh, where I realized I'm getting a little overweight, was I would always hear my kids behind me fucking giggling, <laughs> <laughs> just laughing. <laughs> And I'm like, what? What is happening? And I caught them one time. And what they were trying to do, I'm not. This is not even. I'm not lying at all. They were. They were taking like um, straw wrappers. They were balling up straw wrappers, and they were trying to throw it in my ass crack because my <laughs> ass was always out. My ass was always out, and they'd be like, Hey, 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 Kyson, Dad's ass is out. <laughs> Let's try to let's try to get it. And I'm like, bro, what if they actually made it one time? Bro, you know, uh, what if they actually made it? You know how fucking pissed off that would, I would fuck be? your whole life up. I'm like, get the straw <laughs> out of my, <laughs> get it out of there. <laughs> That's your punishment. Dig it out. <laughs> Dig it out. You got it in there. But I'm like, okay, because I didn't really realize it, and I actually did. What is going on here? You bought me some cheapo equipment. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't you fucking do it. Don't you fucking do it. This is your shit. No, but I I um I would always feel like a cool breeze on the top of my butt cheeks. <laughs> and it'll be a hot summer day, so I wouldn't complain about it or think or put too much thought into it. I'd be like, oh, that's nice. I w- it wouldn't <laughs> dawn on me. It wouldn't <laughs> dawn. That your whole ass is out. That, that my ass thought. is out. I'm not even thinking that. I'm thinking like, no, that cooled me off for a brief second. <laughs> I don't normally feel here there, but that felt pretty. That felt that felt, cooled me felt off. Pretty good, really quick. So I'm like, okay. And I remember I ran to Facebook. This is when I had Facebook, and I treated Facebook like every other schmuck around here, and whoever had Facebook, and you know, you tell Facebook your personal matters is probably that they too don't much. care about. Yeah, they, yeah. they don't care about. You run to Facebook and you tell shit. So I went to Facebook and I posted a status and I said, hey guys, I'm the newest member of the fat community. <laughs> 
What do you do? What do What do we do? <laughs> like it became their problem, right? What do we do about my ass crack always out? <laughs> and I, I'm dead serious. I said that. Uh, bigger underwear. <laughs> The first fucking comment, bro, because I didn't think of it. It's common sense. You got to buy bigger jaws because your ass is getting fat. I had a fat ass. So the first comment was a dude I went to high school with. He was like, you got to buy bigger jaws. He didn't put LOL or nothing. It was just blunt, it was dead direct, like you got to buy bigger jaws. Like it happened to him before or something. <laughs> so, so he was probably like, ah, you in that fat, you in that getting fat stage. You got to buy bigger jaws. The fact that he didn't like personal message or direct message you and he's no, like he no he needs to see this no, ASAP he commented immediately I ain't even have one like on it yet I had one comment he said you gotta buy bigger draws you can delete the post it's the draws it's all the, yeah. we've gotten to the bottom of it <laughs> we figured it out yeah it's just fat you need bigger draws to hide it but I was 20 I think 25 at the time so I spent my whole adult life in medium sized underwear, it ate at my pride to be like, okay, I gotta start buying large. Large? You got me fucked uh, up. Large. Bro. I'm not buying large draws. And so I didn't. I said, so if we're not buying bigger draws, we gotta lose the weight so we can fit our draws right now. Facts. So that was the second indication. I dropped the weight. I had lost 22 pounds and, and everything was good. And then I got fat again. <laughs> And now this time was different. It was it was more so comfort. I was happy. I bought a house. You know, it, with anybody, you buy a house. You got complacent. You got complacent. You get happy. The Baconators came back. They never went away. They never really went away. They just came back away. to your life. They, they Yeah, they're still out there. They just came back to me like, hey, you remember us? <laughs> you know what I'm thinking when you say you got fat? I'm thinking of that commercial, the garbage bag. Hefty, hefty. Hefty, hefty, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking that. <laughs> so, I got I got comfort weight the second time, but it's weight. I got yeah. big. Yeah. I got almost up, because the first time I got up to 200 pounds. The second time, Damn. I ran it up to 190, like 7 Pretty much 200 pounds again. And how much have you lost this round? This time, uh, I lost 20, 24, 24 pounds this time. And we only started a few months ago. Yeah, we really, and that's what, and that's what I was saying, man. We, we went hard. We started, uh, you know, holding each other accountable, making sure we was doing stuff. Even when we wasn't working out together, I had got um, treadmill, made my basement a little workout area. Yeah. You know what I mean? We start going to Division's house and working out in his basement area, you know, his workout area. So, you know, it's you got to stop being fat because I know that's a touchy subject for a lot of people out there, a lot of fatties. Right. But... I'm I'm really trying to talk to the people who are on the verge of becoming fat because that's who I can relate to. Right. I've been there. I've seen the Baconators. I've seen what they can do to you when you consume multiple during a day. I ate three Baconators in Ooh. one day, and it wasn't even I, – I ate them all between the hours. How is that possible? Oh, it's – Bro, my stomach would be all kinds of jacked up. I was fine. I slept like a baby. I bet you did. <laughs> I was, I was All that a, grease. I was on a. I was in a food coma after those baconators. But I bet you was tired. I was. I was really tired. I probably slept. That's for like, a workout in itself. I probably slept for like eighteen hours. <laughs> I probably slept for like eighteen hours. But that's enough about me being fat. I'm not fat anymore. Congratulations, Key. My brother texted me. He said, "Okay, stop." Getting fat, bro. He said, I'm proud of you for losing the weight twice, but don't make it a third time. Stop. You do it a third time. It's you. It's yeah, stop, bro. It's, it's becoming a you problem. Like, now you want attention. Yeah, you're doing this. What do you, what? What do you need? You need money? What do you, what do you want, bro? Stop getting fat to get my attention. I'm about to be 40 years old, bro. Stop, stop trying to get my attention. So... So I that that's Tay, man. We we worked out together and we still are working out. This is my second producer. Got two producers. Cause I'm the fucking man. I'm the fucking man. So if you ask me why, you know why. Don't ask me. I'm the fucking man. And I'm fly as shit. Right now, uh I, all I wear is designer shit. Facts. This is Gucci. 
We got Louis on the jeans. The the socks. Those aren't socks. Those are those are actually Balenciagas. You know how Carter B said the ones that look, the ones that look like socks. Well, I said fuck getting the ones that look like socks. I'm gonna go out and actually get socks. <laughs> I got the real deal. They wearing shit that look like socks. <laughs> Whole time I'm actually wearing socks. <laughs> Like, fuck that. If you really gonna do it, do it. <laughs> no, I don't really I don't wear designer, man. You wear design you got designer mm-hmm. shit? No. Nah. No, I the um, only thing name brand that I normally get is the shoes. Yeah. See I there's a lot of schmucks out here getting designer shit and can't afford it. I mean, seriously, it's it's becoming a problem living in apartments. And the reason why I say it, because I used to be one of those people. I was yeah. a schmuck. I was a dummy with my money. I bought um, two designer belts. It was a Gucci belt and a Louis belt. I still got the Louis belt. I lost the Gucci belt like a dumbass. They both was $400. The Gucci belt was like 380 The Louis was 400 And when I was living in California, dig this here, I bought some Balenciagas, a pair of shoes that was six. Hundred you, you dollars, dead serious, dead serious. I was a, I was a dumbass. Six six hundred dollars. But listen to this. Listen to how stupid this is. It don't make sense. I was living in a studio apartment <laughs> with two other people. <laughs> you sleeping in bed and don't even have a closet for this. No, I didn't even have a bed. I had an air mattress, bro. Swear to you, you're dead serious. I'm, I'm dead serious, bro. I'm dead serious, bro. This is cool with key. I'm gonna keep it real. Uh, it's funny as fuck. We're going we to laugh at my funny. pain. We're going to laugh at the struggles. We're going to laugh at my dumb ass. Uh, y'all not the only smucks out there. I'm going to fucking smuck myself. That's why I can talk about this shit. <laughs> I'm not just going to talk about y'all. I'm going to talk about me too. So I sold. I wore them one time and I sold them because I was like, oh shit. I'm broke. I was like, what did I do that for? And it's because I was around a lot of people yeah, yeah. that had money. I was on social media. I compared myself to them. And motherfuckers was buying Gucci. So I was like, I'm going to go buy Gucci. Motherfuckers right. buying Louis. I'm going to go buy Louis. And that's what people do. They look at social media. They compare themselves. And they try to match other people's lives. Yeah. But a lot of other people got money, though. Like, can right, actually right. afford it. They ain't, they ain't hurting. They're not when hurting they at all. buy they're... a $400 Gucci belt. Designer is for rich people. Fact. It is for rich people. I remember when I was living in California, there was four dudes out there that I was cool with, and they was fly shit all the time. All they wore was designer shit. I'm like, they gotta be rich. Come to find out, they were living in a two... This is a true story. They were living in a two-bedroom apartment. All four of them. So two was sharing a room, <laughs> two was sharing another room. They literally were roommates. Could you imagine that? But they were sacrificing their living conditions to wear fucking designer. <laughs> Can you imagine that sharing a bed, or not a bed, but a room with somebody? And that? but the closet is filled with designer shit. Y'all, y'all sharing a closet too. <laughs> sharing a closet, hey man, you that's my designer. That's my Gucci. No, your Gucci was touching my Gucci. Nah, your Louis is touching my Louis. Get when, your Balenciaga off my motherfucking Prada. <laughs> If you lose some weight, we could share the belt. <laughs> Save money. We could say. <laughs> they probably think like that. Motherfuckers do anything just to look good, bro. It's weird. It's fucking weird. So we people out here sacrificing their living living conditions for a fucking Fendi bag. Fuck it. I tell you what, speaking of Fendi bag, this is another true story here. I wonder can motherfuckers hear that shit through the thing. Anywho, we're having technical difficulties early on with this Cooling with Key podcast. Second episode in. I don't know if you guys can hear this. Hopefully they can't. Blame it on me. I, I will. I mean, like that fucking Tay guy. But listen, uh, I had a janitor at one of my jobs. He's a janitor, right? So he was cleaning out the toilet, right? He was cleaning out shit <laughs> out of the rim of the toilet. <laughs> Shit, I I get it. (laughs) Shit, I just gotta show you. I gotta visual. I gotta give you a visual here, right? Because this is what I saw. I saw a guy. He was like my age. He was probably like twenty nine, something like that. And he was cleaning out shit. (laughs) I gotta give you the visual, bro. Wearing a fucking Fendi bag. 
He had a Fendi bag. You know how they wear them across. You know, motherfuckers <laughs> be thinking they cool as shit. What was in the bag, Key? I have no idea. I was, I was going to... I never found out <laughs> what was in the bag. Got two pages. <laughs> so I was going to ask you what, do you, what do you think would be in that bag? If you saw a janitor with a fucking Fendi bag cleaning out shit in the toilet, what's in that Fendi bag? Dude. Probably can't afford nothing, so he probably got like some hand sanitizer, yeah, a sample, sanitizer, bottle, sample, a sample bottle. bottle. I always thought it was probably like work, work cleaning supplies, like an extra roll of toilet paper just in case somebody ran out. <laughs> you got any simple green? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> right here in my motherfucking Fendi bag. Need some Clorox wipes? A I fucking Fendi bag. So it don't make sense. This guy made fourteen thousand dollars last year. <laughs> He spent half of that on a fucking Fendi bag. <laughs> Seven thousand. He spent half of that on a Fendi bag. Don't need a bag anymore because you don't need money. This shit is crazy. Mm, Let the rich people get that shit. It's okay to it's to nuts. be broke. Yeah. Catch me at TJ Maxx. Like a, you see me at TJ Maxx, I'm balling out. Yeah. I don't care if one sleeve's longer than the other. <laughs> <laughs> one sleeve longer than the other. I'm going to just stretch them both up. <laughs> Fuck it. But catch me. And if you really lucky, you might, if I'm feeling real good, you might catch me at Von Mar. But I don't give a <laughs> shit. It's closed. That's too much. I will, I will start getting designer when I'm on that level. It's, it's right, okay right. to say you're not at that level. Then, then you can really stunt. Then you re- really, really go crazy. Yeah, but yeah. chill for right now, people. Let, that, let the rich people do that shit. I got a friend that I follow on Instagram. A uh, real cool dude from our hometown. He's he got money. He, he's got money, money, like rich. And he posted a conversation between him and his daughter on Instagram. And the conversation said, "Hey, Dad, um, can you buy me a monkey?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a moment and, when your kids know you got money. <laughs> exactly. And so his caption was, um, "Does anybody else's kid ask them for stuff like this?" And I thought, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, ain't no way in hell my kids is gonna see a monkey and be like, man, I bet I'm gonna see if dad can get that. That'll be the quickest drop kick I ever did in my life. Daddy broke, he can't afford D- that. They know dad ain't gonna buy no fucking exotic animal. <laughs> Bro, you keep asking me for, you know, candy at the checkout aisle, maybe a shiny bike for Christmas, some shoes, V Bucks. You stick to the basics. You know, a dog at the very most, but a fucking monkey? <laughs> a monkey. Let the rich people let the rich people buy the fucking monkeys and the designer. All right? I'm sick of it. We are we're literally out here sacrificing our li- living conditions for for fucking designer shit and monkeys. Right. We live in a low-income apartment, but we got a monkey named Bubbles, and we put him in some Gucci shoes. <laughs> we live in a low-income apartment, but look at this fucking monkey. Look at him go with his little Gucci shoes. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with the shit. But Won't this monkey die already? <laughs> <laughs> Old-ass monkey in Gucci shoes. But I'm done with that. Uh, I, w- I want to move on to an article. Uh, it's funny as hell. It's probably y'all probably heard of this story. It's not new. Uh, if you have heard of it, I don't. I don't give a damn. You're gonna hear it again. Maybe I can make it a little bit funny for you. If you haven't heard of it, it's funny as shit. It's scary as shit. If it if it happened to me, it's but, the truth. Uh, apparently, two couple two two couple from. Uh, well, a couple from Russia um, adopted a little girl who they thought was a little girl. Uh, they thought she was eight years old, and she ended up being a grown woman lady. <laughs> That's nuts. She was a grown woman um, pretending to be a little girl. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, back in the day when people needed a roommate really bad, they would get on Craigslist <laughs> and put an ad in, hey, I need a roommate. Like things have changed, things have gotten so bad to the point where there's people out there posing as children to not only get a roommate, but get someone that's gonna, you know, cover your expenses, clothe you, bathe you, treat you like a daughter. 
become your parent, your foster parent. So this little girl, and we got the article up. Uh, I'll read a little <laughs> bit of it real quick. It's yeah, nuts. It. Yeah. it is nuts. So, so originally set to adopt a little girl from Haiti, the Barnett's plans were halted due to the area's massive earthquake. Later in April 2010, Michael told Dr. Oz that the couple was contacted by an adoption agency in Florida saying that they'd like to pair them with a Ukrainian girl. According to Michael, it was a hasty process. Uh, reports that Natalia's records initially indicated that she was born in 2003. According to the Children's Hospital records, a physician examined her in 2010 and estimated her age to be about eight years old. Two years later, the hospital did its own testing and approximated Natalia to be 11. However, in June 2012, the Barnett's, with the court's judge approval, changed Natalia's age from 8 to 22. That's a big jump. That's a fat-ass jump. <laughs> That's a pretty big jump. So, uh, with the birth records indicating that Natalia was born in 1989, making her 30 years old today... Michael says one of the benefits of changing her age was so that she could be lawfully admitted to a psychiatric hospital to get the care she needed. But what made the Barnett's believe Natalia wasn't a child in the first place. <laughs> so I guess a, apparently the first night that they had her, and this was what made them guess her age in the first place. Uh, the first night that they had this, this girl, lady, woman, uh, they gave her a bath. And actually, I don't know why you would give an eight-year-old... That's too old. Like, yeah. She, she could be bathing herself, right? Yeah. But they gave her a bath on the first night. They didn't want to They didn't want to wait. They were like, we got to get this Let's bitch home. Let's touch this baby. We got to get this bitch home and bathe her. Uh, she reeks. <laughs> she, she clearly had to have. They, they took her home. They gave her a bath. And they found out that she had a George W. Bush. <laughs> she, had a, she had a Bush... And I would have been like, I would have told, I would, have, what I would have did. I'm giving my daughter a, a bath, my adopted daughter a bath for the first time, and I see a bush. I'm gonna look at dead eyeballs, <laughs> and I'm be like, okay, you know, the gig's up. What the fuck is this? I'm gonna be like, you know, who, who are you? <laughs> who sent you? Who, who are you? You're not eight. What's going on here? But that's crazy. So that that should have been one thing that. Really? Bro, that, like, that's a common sense. Yeah. Like, okay, she's at least at or past puberty. Gotta be. <laughs> but I'll, I'll read some more. So, on Dr. Oz's show, Michael elaborated that on their very first night together, Christine was giving Talia a bath and noticed that she had a full pubic hair. She had full pubic hair. When you say full, that means bush. She had a bush, all right? The George W. The bush. George W. Bush. Later, Michael claimed that the couple learned of Natalia hiding her menstrual cycle. So apparently this little bitch was chunking <laughs> tampons out the fucking windows. Little bitch. Just chucking them like, you never see these bloody fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> they never get me. <laughs> it is worth noting that she actually did suffer from dwarfism. She so, did. She so, was. Yeah. So when the, you said little bitch, her. I laugh because I'm like, he doesn't even know. That's funny for a whole different reason. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She's, she does have dwarfism. So, you know, she's smaller. She's as small. She's like, she's not a midget. You can't yeah. call her a midget. But there's midget. There's little people. There's dwarfism. There's, there, there's a, quite a few of them. There's, there's a lot of little humans running around here, but apparently they're starting to say, I need a roommate bad. I'm going to go ahead and just pose as a child. They, she owed them so much rent. <laughs> Bro. Can you, can you imagine what was going through her head in order for her to, to be like, you know what? You know what? I want to get adopted. I want to get, I'm going to go ahead and get adopted. My life has been fucked up. I want to read well, you. you know what's crazy? Apparently, she has done this multiple times. They said she's so she's doing this for fun. And that's point. what I was saying. Like once I saw that bush, I would have looked her in the eyeballs and I would have said, "The gig is up. Who are you really?" And hopefully, she would have been like, "All right." I'd have been like the you, door. She would have been like, "All right, you got me." <laughs> Talking like a man. You got me. My name is Charlie the Kid. <laughs> 
My name is Charlie the Child. I'm really 45 years old. I've been doing this for 16 years. It's been working ever since today. I probably should have shaved the bush before you brought me here. It wasn't the bush. Did the bush give me away? Yeah, it was the bush. It was the bush and the bloody tampons outside the backyard. <laughs> Go pick those shits up. Go get your tampons, shave your bush, and get out of my house. And get the fuck out. But that's crazy. And so uh, I want to go to dig this here. I'm going to read a little bit more. It gets more interesting because she's just not a normal, you know, little person. No, not at all. She's not just posing as a child. She ain't there all the way. So look, according to USA Today, Christine also alleged that she became fearful for her life. As Natalia threatened to kill her and her family on more than one occasion, on Dr. Oz's show, Michael explained that Natalia was caught pouring pine saw into Christine's coffee. So it's like, Ma, you need crema? Natalia, what are you doing? I'm trying to fucking kill you. I'm trying to kill you. <laughs> Shut up and drink your coffee. <laughs> you want coffee, Ma? Let's wake up. After she was confronted on the matter, Michael says Natalia simply said, I'm trying to kill you. <laughs> she really did. <laughs> Bro, if keeping it real. <laughs> so she tells them. Well, if keeping it real was a person. <laughs> that's that's Natalia. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Why are you putting pine salt in my coffee? Oh, I want to murder you. <laughs> I want you to die. I, I, want, I don't want you to live anymore. This is nuts. I'll keep reading. The family took the girl to professionals for evaluation while at the stress center. She was documenting. She was telling doctors. She was telling therapists. She was writing down in her notepad. Not only am I trying to kill Christine, but I'm going to kill the brothers too. (laughs) Here's how I'm going to do it. Here's what I'm going to do with their bodies. This is what Michael told Dr. Oz. This girl is nuts. (laughs) Bro. Y'all, like, if she kept this shit... 100. <laughs> she is, I'm going to kill you on Tuesday. I'm going to kill the mom on Wednesday. <laughs> I'm going to cu- take a couple days off and I'm going to come back and kill the brother the weekend on Saturday. Whoa. I got something to do Sunday. Then I'm going to come back Monday and kill the fucking dog. I'm just thinking of that Chappelle skit when <sighs> she keeps it real. <laughs> well, keep keeping it real. <laughs> I keeps it real. Yo, this is this is scary. That is because you know people used to like I said they used to go to Craigslist to get roommates, but they stopped doing that. They stopped doing that because people start murdering people on Craigslist. There's a lot of serial murderers on Craigslist, so they said, "All right, let's stop doing that and let's stop. Let's start acting like kids. Let's get adopted. <laughs> let's go back to taking the risk of getting killed. <laughs> go back to Craigslist. Let's see. Let's let's read a little bit more. So." The family moved to Canada in 2013 without Natalia. Um, Something of a child prodigy. The son began getting media attention as a physics wonder kind. The heck is that? At At the age of 12. At Purdue University. Yeah, he's a smart motherfucker. Um, I want to find where they... So a new family... A new family uh, filed for guardianship of Natalia in 2016. So clearly she's really good. <laughs> we'll take her. <laughs> at, I don't know what she's doing, but she's clearly really good at being this kid. And uh, I, I, I actually don't. I guess Christine and Michael, they left her in an apartment and they paid up her rent for like a year. And it was like, I'm out. I thought that was nice of them. I, if that would have happened to me, she would have been on the road. <laughs> Bro, she I don't know been what on I would road. have done. I tell you what, my dad, when we, when my dad didn't want a dog anymore, right? We used to have a hell of dogs. When he didn't want a dog anymore, it's a true story. Um, and he would go to the back road, like of like going out to the mall, and he would open my car door and he would tell me to throw the dog out the window. <laughs> out the door. He would say, throw the dog out. Do it. Do it, kid. I'm like, nah. Go. Nah, that ain't, that ain't me, dad. You do it. You usually be the one to do it. He's like, you're going to be a man today and you're going to throw this fucking dog out the door. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not doing that, dad. I'm like, 
I'm like eight years old. This is gonna scar me. I'm sure of it. He's like, throw this dog out the window, out the door, or I'm throwing you out. <laughs> or you going with it. <laughs> and so I grabbed the dog, and I threw him out the fucking window, and I yelled. I said, no! And I threw the dog out the window, and that's exactly what I would have did with this little girl. <laughs> I would have I would have chucked her out of a moving car. Oh, my goodness. And I should, and, and I, the shit that she did, I should get a gold medal for that. <laughs> the man that chucked this one, this con artist... She's been tricking Russian couples. That's talent, though. For 16 years, she's good at it. That's, she's, that's, that's, she's really She deserves, good what's that, acting? The Emmys? Emmy. Or an Oscar? Os- Oscar. Oscar, yeah. Yeah, she, she deserves one of them because she is fooling she's the She's tricking out of these the people. shit out of these people. Tricking the shit. Because, you know, she's cl- she clearly probably had a job the whole time that they had her. And can you imagine coming home and you see. A McDonald's uniform <laughs> in her closet. <laughs> Natalia, why why it smell like McDoubles in your room? What is what is this apron? What is this McDonald's apron? Why it smell like McDoubles and McChickens and a long day of customer service? Why is it? What do you? Are you uh, when we drop you off at day? Because that's what I imagine. I imagine they drop her off at daycare. She sneaks out at night time, and she go clocks in and puts in a full eight hour shift. In the a full, a full oh, eight hour, full eight hour shift, and they pick her back up from daycare. She didn't make some money. She's saving money. Why do you have on non slick shoes? What are, what are these referee shoes? <laughs> what are these all black shoes? We, we didn't buy you these. They came with the McDonald uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone, Dad. I'm out here getting it. <laughs> Get- this story is funny as shit to me, man. Brother. But I'm I'm be careful out there, people, please, because um if you're looking for roommates, you know, you can go back to Craigslist and look for a roommate if you need to. But Faking as a child, that is just, that's nuts. At least shave first. <laughs> she did not care at all. She said, you know what? You, the, my, my foster parents are on the way. No, nah, they're going to see this bush. They're going to see this bush. I don't feel like doing shit. I'm going to get the daddy to wash me. I'm going to get them. Th- <laughs> give Imagine me her like. <laughs> <laughs> In my shirt off. In my shirt off. <laughs> she had to, cause at eight years old, at eight there years ain't no old. way. Like, come on now, you just being lazy. I mean, what would they say at the at the foster place? Like, oh, we're gonna take you home, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bathe you. <laughs> we're gonna wash this foster filth off of you. <laughs> well, no, I'm I'm pretty sure she was like, you know, I really want a bath. Can you imagine like the, being a parent, like the confusion, like mm. that's hair. <laughs> That's a, what whole lot, we, that's a whole lot of hair. You sick? Should we shave that? <laughs> you sick, girl? <laughs> you got more hair than me. You got a real bush. That's a problem. I'm all right. I'm done with the article, man. This shit was. That's, I just thought it was funny. I thought it was worth talking about. Um, what? Look, the NBA Finals. Let's get out. Let's, let's switch it up. Let's here. talk about it. Let's talk about it. NBA Finals are is in action. It's uh, what is the series? Two O, Suns. <laughs> really not even close. Two O Suns. Shout out to CP3 man. It'll be dope to see him get a ring. And D Book. D Book is a monster. He is a man. They that whole team has been really. It's a dog. Doing well together. <laughs> um, I got some of the stats pulled up. I'm not one of those. Sport fanatics that just know every single stat there is. Right. I'll be talking to people and they know so much shit about these athletes and these sports and these teams. I'll be like, damn. I don't have that time. What do you what do you do? This is what you do. But anyway, I got the stats pulled up. Uh yeah, man, the Suns have been kicking ass. Bridges had I think this is what? Is this game two? Yes. This is game two. Bridges okay, yeah. had 27 and 7. Crowder had 11 and 10, double double. Uh, DeAndre Ayton had 10 and 11, double double. Book had 31, 5 and 6. CP had 23, 8 and 4. 
they've been going crazy. So it's it's a it's the Suns doing a thing, and then for the Bucks, it's just Giannis sixty four Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> This Giannis 64 Nintendo. He had 42, 12, and 4. Bro, he went off. He, he went, went off. off. But that's the only one. That's the only one. Drew Holiday had a pretty solid game. 17, 7, and 5. That's decent. But he need he needs needs something. So the Suns look like they may be taking it. Um and it'll be good. Like I said. I hope so. CP3, CP3 he deserves he, it. He deserves it. 16 years. That's the one blemish on his record. Yeah. 16 years in the league, man. That'll be dope to see him get a ring. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about the NBA and, you know, they compare all these players to each other. I've always been a a, a basketball fan. Yeah. Like, I'm just a basketball fan. I love basketball players. I really don't try to compare them to another player. I don't do that. I love seeing greatness and let let those great players be great right. on their own level of greatness. You know, and the main topic is the the LeBron and Michael, who's the GOAT. That's always a top argument. Who's the best player? Look, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. Don't come ask me who who I think LeBron is better, LeBron or Michael. It is stupid. It's dumb. It's dumb because it always and forever will be an opinion. It's only an opinion. And we live in a world where we try to change people's opinions so much. I don't care if you like red and I like blue. All right. I'm not going to argue with you why I think blue is better. I have so many people, you know, I would tell them, they'd be like, all right, if you had to pick one, because you got to have an answer for them. Yeah. You got to answer the yeah. question. It's a force. A they force, force you to answer the question, who, LeBron or Mike? I, I, okay, I'll go with Mike. He was a he was a dog. I feel like a little bit he got a little bit more of a dog in him than LeBron, and they he would they would argue with me, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing the arguing thing. Yeah, it's not. It'll never be scientifically proved. Right, right. That LeBron was better or Mike was better. It's right? basically just what you prefer. It, like it, you said, it's it, an opinion. It's an opinion. Yeah. And frankly, I don't give a fuck. That's what it comes down to. That's really the main. I don't care, honestly, but you do, so I'll tell you yeah. who I think. Yeah. And you know, it's it's nuts because LeBron's gonna, you know, he beat he he what broke a lot of Michael's records. Yeah. Okay. He did. And it, I always looked at it like Mike was the greatest in his time. Kobe was the greatest in his time. LeBron the greatest in his time. Why can't we wrap it up? Why can't we just say that? You just when when you start debating like that, you're not really appreciating exactly. You're, you're downplaying what LeBron did. If you're taking exactly. MJ and if you're taking LeBron, then you're downplaying what MJ. Like I, you just. I never. If a great player is a great player, I never take away from them to try to talk about somebody else. It's, yeah. Let that player yeah. be great. Right. They are. Listen, their lives are a hundred times better than ours. Ain't that the truth? Like, I don't get it. I don't freaking get it. And a lot of, you know, somebody asked me at work, uh, Damian Lillard, Lillard or, or Derrick Rose? I said, look, man, I got to get back to work. I don't give a <laughs> shit. I, I really don't I really don't, I don't care. have time today. They said, Come on, man, if you had to pick <sighs> D-Rose. And right when I said D-Rose, <sighs> oh, man, what, what, why, man? Why? Because, man, shut the hell up. <laughs> That's why. Shut up. I picked D Rose because I picked D Rose. What are we gonna do? You gonna fight me? <laughs> you know what's crazy is I forgot about this. People will. No, on Facebook, um, this was like a year or so ago. It was two dudes around here. I forgot who they was, but I swear to God, it was two dudes talking about LeBron and Mike and who's the greatest. They was having that discussion on Facebook, and they eventually start talking about each other. And one said something about the other dude's mom, and they literally was about to fight. Over over other grown men. Grown men was about to fight over other grown men that they never met before. They I don't think people when they have that discussion, they never pause and just be like, wait, what am I what am I doing? Wait, I'm actually they get too wrapped up into it. I'm actually arguing with a man about two other men and their greatness, and we're two schmucks, broke as fuck. <laughs> not great at all. We're not even average. But you know the reason why people argue nonstop 
is because they ain't listening to hear that person's side of the conversation. Oh yeah, or their side or opinion of why they think. Well, that's that's they're the thing. listening. It's never. I've never heard two people argue and one say, "You know what? You're right. You're right. Yeah. I've changed my answer." They're listening to respond. That. They just they, so they're exactly. not hearing your whole argument, anyways. And at the end of the day, you're gonna pick who you like. Right, it's what you prefer. It's who you prefer. If you think Kobe was the best, because Kobe was a monster. I grew up. Kobe was the first player where I start actually, you know, understanding the game of basketball, and yeah. appreciating it, seeing Kobe. For me, it was like, whoa, he's doing something I've never seen nobody out here do. Right, before. Mike, I was a little too young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't until I got older I started watching Mike old games His and start, old stuff. Yeah, start yeah. realizing like he was an animal. Yeah, because the, the MJ, I remember the Wizards MJ. Yeah. The the Wizards MJ. <laughs> that he was a dog. He was a monster. <laughs> <laughs> he was the Chicago Bulls MJ. I'll forget about it. <laughs> it's the Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> so when he went to Washington. <laughs> No, but that whole that whole discussion is is really stupid to me. I never, and that's with anything in life. I don't compare nobody's greatness, nobody's talents. I don't even do that with rappers or singers. Yeah, and that's why people are afraid to chase their own dreams because they they do that with people already. They do that with celebrities, athletes already. So whenever they start to do their own path, the first thing they gonna do is compare themselves with other yeah. people doing yeah. that. And I, I don't I don't do that. And that's why you shouldn't do that. Yeah. You know, it's fucking LeBron and Mike. They were the greatest basketball players to ever Just live. appreciate it. Just appreciate it. Call it what it is. Yeah. Call it what it is. And Facts. stop buying fucking monkeys. <laughs> stop buying designer. Let's start let's start uh focusing on upgrading our living conditions. Yes. You got five roommates right now, but hey, you yes. Fendi bag sure does look good on you while you're cleaning that shit out the toilet. Focus on generational wealth. <laughs> focus. Seriously. Not for real. It's nuts, man. We well, Our focus is on too many things, and social media fucks it all up. Social media makes us compare our lives yeah. to other people, and it, it speeds us up. It makes you compete. Imagine, like like we talked about, imagine spending... Two to three thousand on your shirt, your pants, your shoes, your belt, all that. Imagine like if you only got fifteen likes, <laughs> and here you spent all that money on I designer see it all the stuff time. to try to impress people. I see people fly shit around here all the time. I'm like, damn, damn, cuz he flies hell. Let me give him this he got light the so he can get to eleven. Shit. Yeah, let me let, let him get him a double digits. Hey, he earned his 11 <laughs> likes, man. Let me get him this like, man. <laughs> that nigga spent five racks on the fit, man. I, I, <laughs> that nigga spent five racks on the fit. Who, who am I to hold likes? him back from his double digits? Yeah. <laughs> he not in double oh, digits yet. Oh, my goodness. So, listen, people, I'm only here to motivate because I was a dumb schmuck, too. I talked about myself. I was in an apartment buying Gucci and Fendi. I didn't buy Fendi. I bought Gucci, Louis, and Balenciaga, and I was a dumbass. I never bought any of those. I was an idiot. All right? I was stupid. But growth, people grow at their own rate. But uh, if you are living in an apartment and you're buying designer shit, wake up. It's time to wake the fuck up. It's hard to to wake people up. Sometimes you got to shake them. Yeah. And the way I do it is with comedy. If you don't like it, I don't give a damn. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, the thing about it is people are so sensitive. So People are very sensitive. They'll, they'll, even if, like, me and you, how many times have you told me something like, no, nah, I'll tell you you're wrong, you need to do this. Yeah. And yep. situation, we ain't going to go into the situation, but you, you're right. like, you know what? You need to apologize. Hey, you need to do this. And you what should I do, do that. I'm yep. like, I need somebody like that. And to, a lot of people need you know, that and they don't have that and that sucks yeah, for them right. because they're surrounded with other people that's doing the same shit that they're doing yeah. so when you surround yourself with people that can check you and be yeah. like yo you just spent $1,100 on shoes and a belt Yeah, you got a belt and some shoes and you spend $1,100 do you think that was the smartest move? no right. that was dumb 
Right. That was dumb. Don't ever let this shit happen again. Yeah. But they're not surrounded by those people. Right. They're surrounded with people that are like, bro, you just you did oh, that. Oh yeah, you did. Hey, that. take a picture did, of the receipt yeah. and post it on Instagram. <laughs> Let these motherfuckers know you just spent twenty five hundred dollars. Let's take a video. You going through the money as you're paying for it. Facts. We'll and you know what? We gonna save that uh, that whole topic posting pictures of money for our third episode. Bet. We're gonna wrap this one up next I, time. Yeah. I appreciate today for being the producer of the show for the second episode. And uh, listen, this has been Cooling with Key. We are out. Let me free my spirit With these new powers I can reach your mind With these new powers I can change your life And none of them better say shit to me I just came straight from Reticuli They to my friends and my shit for me Look what these people done did to me They really tried to get rid of me I just came back to this earth through a memory